jurors found on Tuesday that the New York Times did not defame Sarah Palin, the former Alaska governor and Republican vice presidential candidate, in a June 2017 editorial that wrongly claimed a link between an ad from her political action committee and a mass shooting many months later. It was a one-two punch for Palin. The unanimous verdict came a day after the presiding judge, U.S. District Judge Jed Rakoff, ruled that he would set aside the jury's verdict, whatever it might be, and dismiss the case. He said Palin had failed to make a sufficient argument that the Times had acted with actual malice to let the case be determined by a jury. That legal standard of actual malice? set in a 1964 U.S. Supreme Court ruling that also involved the Times, requires that the newspaper either knowingly published damning and false information or recklessly disregarded the likelihood that its claims were likely to prove false. You decided the F. I decided the law, Rakoff told jurors on Tuesday. It turns out they were both in agreement, in this case. The newspaper cheered the verdict, with spokeswoman Danielle Rhodes Haw calling it a reaffirmation of a fundamental tenet of American law, public figures should not be permitted to use libel suits to punish or intimidate news organizations t. Rakoff wanted the verdict to be heard by the appellate court as well. And now, the jury's verdict for the Times arrays even steeper odds against Palin's success. Rakoff heard the attorney's arguments and made his announcement Monday outside of jurors' hearing so they could continue to deliberate, unaffected by his thinking and so the appeals court could take guidance from the actual verdict. If it were to set aside his ruling, the jury's verdict would still stand. Palin's attorneys, Kenneth Turkle and Shane Vogt, did not return NPR's requests for comment after the verdict. Palin's lawsuit took more than four and a half years to unfold. In the trial's early stages, Rakoff had also concluded that Palin's team had failed to make a sufficient evidentiary case of actual malice against the Times and its former editorial page editor, James Bennett. He dismissed the case then, too. But the appellate court overruled Rakoff's decision and ordered him to take a fresh look. That culminated in the trial that wrapped up Tuesday, an intense confrontation between a conservative populist who had often derided the lamestream media and the nation's leading news outlet. Facing a tough and self-imposed deadline, Bennett had sought to rework an editorial the night Representative Steve Scalise, a conservative from Louisiana, was shot by a leftist. Bennett wanted to make a broad indictment of rampant gun violence and incendiary political speech. An early draft of the editorial invoked Sarah Pack's 2010 AD with crosshairs over the congressional districts of Democratic lawmakers targeted for defeat. 